In the last episode of Vintage Teardown, we took a look at this old vintage oscilloscope from Leader. I hope that you liked that video. I've told you that next we will open this portable TV. This one is black and white. It works with only analog TV signal, so we can't really test it, because analog TV signal is long gone, but it also has a video and audio input. Since on the back we have this charger switch, I'm assuming this also has some sort of battery socket inside, so it could be fully portable. It works at 12 volts, which in this case is made externally with a DC adapter. This TV is quite old, so the screen is made with a cathode ray tube and is also just black and white. To select the frequency, so to select the TV channel that we want, we use a knob on the side, so everything is analog. I think it would be quite interesting to open this and see all this old technology, to talk about how analog TV used to work and what filters we use to select our TV channels. See the cathode ray tube and the rest of the old circuits and components. And the best of all, we will also see the flyback transformer. So let's open this. Make sure that you subscribe and activate the bell. So let's get started. On the Electronoops channel we have electronics projects and pretty much everything is new tech and digital. But now I had the idea of starting a new segment. Go back a few years and tear down electronics and see what we have inside and also tell you about the specs and much more. So welcome to Vintage Tear Down. This episode is sponsored by GLC PCB. If you have a design and you want low-cost PCB prototypes, check the services on glcpcb.com. For only $2 plus shipping, you can get 5 PCBs of any color that you want. The order process is very simple. Select Code Now. Upload the Gerber files of your PCB, then select your settings, such as color, thickness and more. Place the order and receive the 5 boards for only $2 in just a couple of days. More services on glcpcb.com What's up my friends, welcome back! So here we have our vintage TV, which by the way is from a brand called Orchild, and I couldn't find anything about it on the internet. This TV wasn't mine, so I don't know anything about it. What I do know is that it still works, so I connect 12 volts on the back input. I press the switch and there you go. But all we have is white noise, because this TV needs analog TV signal, and here in Spain we don't have that anymore. Nowadays we used a so-called DTV, or digital television signal, and for that you will need a TV capable to receive that, or at least a DTV receiver, which here in Spain we call a TDT, which means Televisión Digital Terrestre. Anyway, analog television transmits programming in a continuous signal. This signal varies in the amplitude, depending on the information contained in the picture. It's kind of the same on how music was transcribed to the vinyl records. The television signal goes up and down depending on what's being broadcast. This analog signal is transmitted on a certain radio frequency, from the television station transmitting antenna over the air, and then we receive that with the antenna connected to our TV set. All you have to do is to set your TV to that specific frequency and then you will get the TV signal that was modulated for that channel. In our case we use this knob here to do that, and I'm pretty sure that inside this is connected to a variable capacitor, and that will change the value of a filter. You see, to select a specific band of the frequency we use filters, which could be low pass filter, high pass or band pass filter. A band pass filter will only allow a specific frequency to pass let's say 100 MHz. So if you have a TV channel at that frequency, you'll see the picture for that channel. Television frequencies are measured in MHz. Very high frequencies or VHF, channels 2 to 6, are operating in the frequency range between 54 and 88 MHz. Channels 7 to 13 operate in the frequency range between 174 and 260 MHz. And ultra-high frequencies or UHF, Channels 14 to 83 operate in the frequency range between 470 and 890 MHz. So that's what these numbers here are meaning. But the blue column is just for radio, because this TV could also receive radio signal, without any image and play the sound on the speaker. Now this analog transmission was not perfect. The bandpass filter sometimes merged two channels in one, so we would have overlap pictures, loss of signal, a lot of noise, other interferences and a lot of other problems. That's why nowadays we have the digital TV, which is a whole other world. So by knowing how this analog TV works, 
we should know what to expect to see inside. For sure we won't see many ICs. Because this is analog, so we'll see a bunch of capacitors and coils, and all analog circuit. So guys, let's open it. A few screws and I take the top part out. Here we have a small 8 ohm speaker for the sounds. By the way, the analog radio still works, so we could hear it. Ok, so the cool parts are here. We can see the cathode ray tube, which in this case is very small, because I'm used to see huge cathode tubes for big TVs. And yes, we do have the flyback transformer that we'll take out later and maybe even see some electric arcs. As you can see, the rest of the circuit are a bunch of capacitors, resistors, some trimmers, a few small transistors and I can also see two ICs. One is the CD1379CP, which is a chip deflection system IC, and I don't even know what that is, and the other one is just a simple amplifier. I can also see a power transistor on each side, each with a heat dissipator. We also have this small transformer, probably for boosting the voltage even more. This here is the cathode tube electrons lamp. Remember, the cathode tube needs high voltage, and we get that with the use of the flyback transformer. See my tutorial on the flyback transformer for more. Anyway, never touch this tube or the transformer while the TV is powered on, otherwise you will get a pretty strong shock, with a lot of pain. On the side we have the frequency filter PCB, and here we have another small PCB for the radio or TV selector. Ok, let's tear this down and see each part separately, and maybe we'll find something more interesting. I first take the speaker cable out and put that part aside. Then I start pulling out all the connectors so we could separate the PCBs. Now I can take out the main PCB. And yes, below this you can see that there is a small case for batteries. So this TV back in the day could have been fully portable, because it works at 12 volts. Now I want to take out the screen. We have 4 screws around it and a metal collar. I take those out and there we go, we can now take out the screen. Then I just desolder the wires from the deflection coils and we can take a look just at the screen. So this is the cathode ray tube. To create a pixel, electrons are created inside of this component and they are shoot towards the screen. The screen inside is covered with a fluorescent material and that when hit by an electron it will glow, so a pixel will be created. To select where the electron will hit the screen, we use two deflection coils, these two here. By changing the magnetic field, we can push the electron in the X and Y direction, and by that we select the position on the screen. To change the magnetic fields, we apply signal on these four connectors here, which are the input for the coils. So that's how an image is created on this cathode ray tube. The amplitude of the received signal will tell us if the pixel will be turned on or off. Ok, so now I take out the tuning PCB from the side. I can see the main inductor used for the filter. And as I predicted, the knob is connected to this component, which is a variable capacitor. So by varying this capacitor value, we can change the band of the bandpass filter. Then using some wires, the signal will be connected to this Faraday insulated box. And here I believe that we make the demodulation. Sound and video are demodulated separately. So these are the main parts of an analog video TV receiver. We start with the tuner filter, which is controlled by the knob for the channel selector. Then we have an IF amplifier, which is followed by the demodulator filter. This will separate the audio signal from the picture signals. The audio is then amplified and connected to the speaker. The video signal is also amplified and connected to the cathode of the screen, and with the amplitude of the signal, we can control the brightness of the pixel. The same video signal is connected to the sync separator, and this will divide the signal into the X and Y axis for the screen, and the resulted signal is connected to the X and Y deflection coils. So that's how we get the sound and the rows and the columns for the picture. So the signal is received by this antenna, which is connected to this PCB. We amplify the signal and we filter it with a frequency selector. 
Then we have to demodulate the sound and the video, and that will give us the signal for the X and Y axis of the screen. Using these four wires, we apply the signal to the coils of the tube. And using the flyback transformer and the electron lamp, we create and shoot electrons. The coils would deflect the trajectory of each electron and create the picture. As you can see, compared with any other digital TV, the circuit is very simple. Just a bunch of passive components, some filters, a demodulator and the electron tube. Another interesting component is this flyback transformer. Remember from previous videos, it's just a normal transformer but with a huge winding ratio, so we can get thousands of volts at the output. We also need high frequency for this. So usually we have a small flyback coil that together with a transistor could create a high frequency and high voltage signal and we apply that to the tube to make it work. We also have some other small components, such as the linear volume potentiometer, some switches to change from TV to radio signal, and other variable inductors or capacitor trimmers in order to fine adjust the receiver circuit. That usually is done manually for each TV and then we have to go and place the trimmers. So guys, that's how a vintage analog TV works, more or less. I'll put below some more deep information about each part, but basically we have the antenna to receive the RF signal. Then we amplify that and filter it only for the channel that we want. We demodulate the received signals. And one side will go to the audio amplifier for the speaker, and the other side is divided into two signals for the X and Y axis of the screen. That together with the flyback transformer and the cathode ray tube will create the picture on the fluorescent material inside of the screen. So now you should know a little bit more about analog TV signals, how it works and how this kind of TV works as well, and we have also seen a few interesting components. I hope that this video was interesting for you, and maybe you have learned something new. Make sure that you subscribe and activate the notification bell. Consider supporting my work on Patreon. So thanks again and see you later guys.